everyone, my name is Charlie and I have 100% success rate of winning PIP. That's whether it's claims, mandatory reconsiderations, which is the posh word for appeal, um, reviews, and I've only done one tribunal, but we won. Okay, so 100% success rate. I also suffer from chronic illness myself. Am I recording? Yeah. I'm great with PIP, crap with technology. Because <laughs> I suffer from chronic illness, I have a severe form of arthritis, so I'm in varying levels of pain 24 seven, and I suffer from chronic fatigue. And when I say chronic fatigue, I'm in the type of fatigue where my body can shut down and I can sleep for 36 hours. Like right now, I'm struggling to hold my head up, but this is, this is really important. My channel is getting more and more views and every day I'm getting emails from people desperate for help, okay? And what is clear is, uh, uh, well, the whole process sucks. I think we can agree it sucks. But what's clear is y there's no training. So today, this is critical. This is so important. I would not win PIP claims if I didn't go through this information. It's the behind the scenes PIP scoring points. This is not a secret. The government don't keep it a secret. Admittedly, they don't like promote it. But everything you do has to be about these points. I'm going to go through them with you. I'm going to give you examples. And I am going to be brutally honest with you. By the way, I'm sorry about the background. Um, I've, I'm losing my home. You know, I've lost my job. I'm losing my home. So it's, I mean, it's a bit, bit of going through change. Um, so yeah, sorry about that. But I've discovered that actually a couple of things. One, you don't care what I look like. The fact that I've got dirty hair and stuff, you don't care because you understand because you wouldn't be watching this if you didn't suffer from chronic illness or if you didn't have a loved one that suffered from chronic illness. So I really am grateful to those of you that just accept me for how I am. And also I've discovered that you don't care what the background's like so long as I've got, I'm providing you with value. Hence why we are now recording this guide. Before we start on these points, if we suffer from incontinence, we don't wanna engage face to face with other people. If you've got IBS, uh, you don't really want to engage face to face with people because you don't know when your IBS is going to kick in. If you're in pain, varying levels of pain constantly, you don't really want to socialize with people because you know of pain. Fatigue, the same, you literally don't have the energy and it takes a lot of energy. And someone or someone else came up with a really good example, so I don't know if you this is relevant for you, but because of her mobility challenges she would get anxious that she couldn't get away from people so if there was any unrest she couldn't get away because she couldn't move fast enough and i thought i never even considered that she's right i wouldn't be able to get away i i mean i'm lucky that that isn't constantly in my head you know yeah i'm aware of it and i do consider it i don't really get out that much but um that can create anxiety. With PIP, with this one, when you're in the assessment, they are absolutely, totally and utterly going to answer this question themselves based on how you behave. And because for us, if we're brought in for an assessment with a doctor or a PIP, it's our culture means that we show respect. So we try and put a bit more effort into our appearance. We try to sit up straight when we're talking to people. My pain levels increase massively if I'm face to face with someone because I hold my body differently. I, I breathe differently. You know, I'm using my neck differently. I'm trying to be normal. Again, if you're in the assessment, try and be yourself. Try and be yourself. And I would absolutely take a battle buddy with you for the assessment. I now, I don't want anyone doing the assessments on their own. I don't. Even if we've prepped, so the soldier, ex-soldier, codename ex-soldier, um, he's sound. He's really, really good at communication, really great guy, get on brilliant with him, proper military sense of humour. I'm going to be on the assessment with him um, as a battle buddy because Pip will try and trip you up. Um, so it's better to have a battle buddy with you that knows what they're talking about. But if you can't, look at this. Look, at, Let's look at the points, right? Obviously, this is all based on fact, yeah? Based on truth. If you 
avoid engaging with other people face to face and you go to your assessment alone, zero. That's it. If you need social support, having someone with you, you have to reflect that in your assessment. You have to have someone with you, yeah? And you can request, we, obviously I, I'm not able to travel around and see people when I'm working with them. And I've worked with people across the country. I don't have to be with them to be able to attend an assessment with them. And we'll request a phone assessment. The more I've done this, the more I've built my confidence. And I've said to people, well, we can't go for the assessment. Even if they're in Stoke, I'm like, we can't go in for the assessment. Yeah, but they're gonna want us to. And I'm like, look, I'm sorry, I am not well enough to go in for the assessment. I'm not, because they specifically set it up on the walking distances and the doors and the fire doors, like at the tribunal. I'm not going in for the assessment. We need to request a phone, phone assessment. And if you're in the position where when you go to the doctors or something like that, it knocks you off your feet for days and it takes you time to build yourself back up. Why would you make yourself sicker for a PIP assessment? Request a phone assessment. Just request it. That's what the option's there for. And it's because of your health conditions. So I've built my confidence with that. So just request it. So yeah, so that having social support, make sure you've got someone with the assessment and just state and i think this is really easy for us to put in about the psychological distress if you've got depression and anxiety which 80 percent of people that suffer from chronic illness suffer from depression and anxiety if you're experiencing that you need to put that in there okay so for example you could put um i avoid uh mixing with people um because i am always worried about my IBS, about being incontinent. I'm embarrassed for that to happen in front of people. Um, my anxiety goes through the roof. If you talk about your depression and anxiety, you need to be blunt about how it makes you feel, okay? So what I've discovered, which I'm really fortunate, so I don't suffer from depression and anxiety myself, and I do a lot, a lot of work to make sure that I do as much as I can to avoid it. I understand there's a chemical imbalance, but I think there is a lot we can do for ourselves. And I'm very good at fighting it. I didn't realize how people's anxiety can very quickly result at risk of harm. That people can, if for, kept in a situation where they're uncomfortable, it can result in aggression, shouting, throwing things. I'm sorry if that's happened and I know it's embarrassing and obviously that's not how you want to behave, but make sure you state it if that does happen to you. And please don't worry that, well, if I say that and Pip catches me and I'm out my house, I'm, they're gonna think I've been fraudulent. No, this is Pip, we don't have to stay in our homes to get Pip. We don't have to, you know, oh, I did that at the beginning, don't I? You don't worry, you just, because if you are out and you struggle with mixing face to face, you're gonna be in an environment where you feel comfortable with people you feel comfortable with. Yeah, but you just state it, just put the detail. Okay, let's wrap up. Hope this was helpful. Obviously I've time stamped it, you know, where it's broken down into blocks so you can come back to bits. This is how you win pit. If you do not follow this scoring system, you're not gonna win. If you do not, when you go through this, if you don't fit into the categories with the points, don't bother claiming because you're not ready to get pip yet. If you don't get the points, you're not ready to get pip. And if you're someone that's fraudulent and is just trying to claim money so you can sit around and do nothing, get the fuck off my channel. This is for people that truly suffer from chronic illness. Um, so for those of you chronic illness warriors, I will speak to you soon.